Hey YouTube, Texas Blades here. Today we're gonna make some uh, pocket knives or some neck knives rather, and we're gonna make them out of a file. It's probably I don't know, about a quarter inch thick, something like that, maybe a little thicker, and eh, about a quarter inch. <clears throat> it's a nice heavy duty file, and this file has been annealed, so it was all bent up. All we did was laid it out on the concrete and. Uh, slammed it with a sledgehammer a couple times and got the bow out of it and then put it on a nice soft piece of wood and uh, kind of got all the little you know waviness out of it you can tell it's pretty straight down here it's not so straight you can tell it curves down still a little bit on the end but we're not going to use that <coughs> we're going to start off with the tip and these are the two we're going to be making today it's uh, some designs I had been working on playing around with and they were a lot bigger you can see I've been trimming off of it I need to kind of even up that blade a little bit so it don't just look like a sudden drop right there now we're just going to lay them out on the file get them both to fit <clears throat> and then we're going to go with a piece of soapstone around them and draw them out I, I don't use uh, dyes or anything to do this it's a lot simpler just to use soapstone and do it by if you were trying to make a thousand of the same knife, I can understand doing that or using some kind of jig, but ours can change out. I don't really care if, uh, you know, one's not the exact same as the other. I, they're all going to be handmade, custom cut, so they're all going to be a little, <clears throat> a little bit different uh, here and there, you know. And I'm going to show these in some designs that I came up with for neck knives. These are just the two that I picked out to work with first. And we're going to see how well they work. And you see how this one drops. This one did the same thing, but it kind of dropped too far. And it kind of clamped on your finger a little bit. Didn't feel comfortable holding the piece of paper, so I didn't think it would feel comfortable holding the knife. So I'm going to get these drawn out, and I'll come back, and we'll start cutting on them. Grinding on them, rather. Alright, so you can see we got our first one laid out here. Just marked around it with a little bit of soapstone. Uh, kind of colored in the in between there. Like this. So now that it's laid out, we're just going to take a hand angle grinder. A little four and a half inch angle grinder and grind all the white out all the way around it and then you can see I still have plenty enough file here to do my other blade on and I may end up having to trim some of it it looks like the very tip of it there a little bit anyway so we'll come back once we get this one ground out we'll draw this one in and when we'll get it we'll get it ground out so we'll be back and show you where we're at in just a minute Alright, so I just wanted to show you guys how ugly this process really is when you're doing it with an angle grinder. You know, if you had a bandsaw, you could just cut this out with a bandsaw and then grind out the curves, you know, make it a little easier. But when you're doing it with a angle grinder, and you can tell my wheel is worn out there. I've done done, uh, I've already done half a knife with it and then a whole other knife, and it was a large knife, so... I'm trying to get at least one of these small ones out of this before I chunk it and put a new one on it. But you can see what I'm doing is I'm just cutting from this side, cutting from this side, grinding the top out, and then that way I don't waste my grinding wheel grinding this bit out. And then right here, I'll come in with the edge of the wheel, the tip of it up here. I'll come in with it this way, and then I'll come in with it this way, and then I'll come in with it this way, and then all this I'll just grind out. But this I'm trying to cut with it. It'd be a lot easier if I had a cutting wheel, but I, I've got a bunch of grinding wheels and no cutting wheels. Right here we're just going to bring bring it into about right here, and we're going to leave this back half so we have this handle to work with while we're grinding on all this. And then when I put the other knife, it'll be about right here that'll leave me all this as a handle to grind on it so just makes it a little bit easier and 
I just wanted to show you guys how ugly that is. I mean, it doesn't look pretty when you're starting out. And these are just going to be blanks. Uh, I may grind out the uh, file marks out of them, but that's about it. We're not going to bevel them. If I did, I'd bevel it right here. <clears throat> is where this thing would be beveled at. But for now, we're just going to make some blanks out of it and, uh, you know, have... Uh, instead of using these we can use these and I probably should have used a regular piece of, I don't know I may make some knives out of these and then use these and cut them out of a real thin piece of stainless I have <clears throat> and make those the you know templates so we're gonna keep working on it keep grinding on it and we'll be back alright so I want to show you guys how far we've gotten you can see the tips almost there. Got a little bit of white there to take out. Not too much. Down here is gonna be a little bit more difficult to get with the angle grinder. Uh, I think I might do it with the bench grinder. I don't know. I'll decide when I get to it. I'm gonna shave this off before I do anything. Getting this curve right here is gonna be kind of complicated, but we'll start hitting it here soon, and I'll just have to mark it out and then mark it on the other side to be able to hold it right. And we're going to come through here with a little cut down to about right here and then meet this cut with it and shave off the back side. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and get all this cut out and shape the way we want it with the angle grinder. That way we're not holding, you know, a piece of metal that big instead of an entire file. So you can see it's coming along pretty well. All right so much for that update we'll be back with another one uh, after we do a little bit more grinding on it and then I'll show you kind of how I hold the grinder whenever I uh, grind it so we'll be back You can see there ain't too much left to do on it. Get the grind marks out of it. Make everything uh, even, you know. Make the swoops look right. You can see I've got that one down a little bit, but I need to bring it down a little bit more and then even out the back handle. But I think I'm going to do all that on a bench grinder and make it a little bit easier. It's not too bad. Didn't take too much time either. It probably about, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes of grinding on it. Got it almost cut off, but I think I'm going to go ahead and wait to cut the rest off till, uh we get it on the bench grinder. That way it's easier to work with. can work with the back like that and not have to touch it and get it hot. You know, be less heat transfer since there's only that much holding it on. It's only going to transfer heat through that, so... It won't be too bad. I should be able to finish it in maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. So I'm going to hit it with the bench grinder and uh, come back and show you the finished. Uh, it ain't going to be a finished knife, but it's going to be a, a finished blank. So once we get that there, we'll come back and show you what we have. I don't know. I might, might do a little bit of uh, showing you how I use the bench grinder. I really didn't, uh, I couldn't hold the camera and use the angle grinder at the same time. So I only got a little bit of that just to kind of show you how I, I just flip it upside down and I hold it in one hand like this and then you drag this across the wheel. So, you know, get a little bit of spark in your face, but if you don't mind it, it don't hurt you none. So, we'll be back. 
Okay, so you can see we're just about there with it. Got a little bit of straightening to do through the swoop here and through the swoop on front. Uh, even this out a little bit in here. I think I'm going to do the back of it with a bench grinder though. It just seems like it would be a lot easier. I don't mind using the angle grinder. Uh, I couldn't film while I was using the angle grinder. All I could get was a little clip because uh, I'm holding the angle grinder upside down like so with the wheel right here and then I use this like so you know run it across the wheel like that so I'm using both hands to do this and it's kind of hard to try to hold a camera at the same time so but we got our swoop uh, cut in there pretty well you know, I'd like to bring it in a little bit more and kind of even out that side right there a little bit but yeah, we're almost there with it. Uh, I got to get the grind marks out of it all the way. You know, I got that side a little bit better than that side, but so we got a little bit of work to do there. And then, uh, but like I said, I think I'm gonna do the back on the bench grinder and get it straight with the bench grinder. And then I may go ahead and like take a Dremel and come through here and even that out. I don't know. We'll just have to see where it's at whenever I'm done grinding on it see how much more work needs to be done the uh, handle also needs to be a little bit skinnier let's see if I can find it you can see so that handle needs to be a little bit skinnier and that swoop needs to be a little bit more aggressive on the backbone you know, somewhere you can plant your finger down on it when you're cutting, make it a little bit sturdier, cut a little bit better. So, not too much difference. A little bit, not too bad. Definitely need to bring that in a little bit. It would make it look a lot better anyway. Give you somewhere to hook your finger around. So, once we uh, get this knocked out on the bench grinder, I may show some filming on the bench grinder I don't know but once we get it knocked out I'll definitely come back and uh, show you the finished blank anyway we're not gonna do any beveling on it right away I'm gonna get some blanks cut out before I start practicing my bevels again so we'll get this one cut out and I think I'm gonna do that next one in another video uh, which one is it that one as, uh, I think I'm going to do it on a piece of steel. Really, uh, for the templates on these, I'm going to cut out stainless steel. I have some uh, really thin stainless steel that would work perfect for templates. So. And like I said in the beginning of this video, none of my knives are going to look uh, perfect. You know, None of them are going to be exactly the same, meaning it might be this uh, same knife, but the handle might be a little bit bigger, a little bit skinnier, you know, the bevel may be a little bit higher up on it, so you never know until you're finished with it and look at it, you know, if you're not using a jig, they're going to come out different, so we'll be back. Alright, so there's our neck knife blank, you can see there's some stuff that's going to have to be worked out on it. Uh, and the reason we're only doing blanks right now, we're going to do three or four blanks and then I'm going to start working on my bevels. But you can see we got all the grind marks out of it. And I don't always like to take the grind mount, uh, marks out like this one. I left the grind marks in it. So, I don't always take them out, but on these particular knives we're going to. Uh, so the next video we're going to do, we're going to do another neck knife blank and then we're going to start cutting bevels on them and I'll show you how we do that. Thanks for watching YouTube.